here you can see the wraparound greenhouses to the south, to the east, and the other side of the building to the west. And this turns the sunlight into warmth and warms the house to about 35 to 40% of the heat needed. We're now looking over the reflecting pond, which also works in the winter even better than in the fall because of the white covering. It reflects right into the greenhouse. And it's amazing because it's always over five to 10 degrees in the greenhouse when it's anything down to minus 15 outside. So there's a heat gain of 25 degrees already. And this is where the cots come in, in this part of Germany. It's like a second rent. You pay your rent for the, for the building and then you pay the same again for heating it. Unless you go in for new and solar systems. The aim was to work with a 1938 built house, the end house of a whole row of houses, which had a small gable towards the south, and to make it into a zero energy house or as near as possible. So we took the permaculture idea, the element was the lean-to greenhouse, and we put it on all three sides, on east, south, and west. And so we did a wraparound greenhouse. We had some really good advice from a group down near Hanover who worked out that for seven or nine meters at this point here, we would have the heat loss. So in point of fact, we decided against this part and decided not to build that because then we could get the east sun directly in and we could then do more thermal insulation from inside. The same was on the here. Although we were trying to get different zones going, different zones of cold to cool to warm. Um, we had to take this away as well. And we pulled in the greenhouses right to the, this part here. And then we just built on this section solid here with bricks and really good thermal insulation. That's um, a new bathroom the entrance hall, and then the cloaks and shoe place for the two houses. Because it's really two houses with one doorway. That's the system in the whole settlement of Lebensgarten. Now, here then we have the reflecting pond in front. The other thing is that we have the flaps here, which are right at the top of the greenhouses. And they open right at the edge here when it goes over 30 degrees centigrade. The rest of this is here for the warm water uh, solar thermi system. And um, the same thing, we have the, fl the flaps opening in both sides here. So it's, it's actually, um, it's cooling in the in the summer and it's heating in the winter. It's cooling in the summer because the sun comes from much higher and reflects off this 
angle here back into into the air. In the in the winter, the sun comes down at a much lower angle and goes through at um, 90 degrees, tur being turned into heat within the glass house. The other side here, the east side, we put some photovoltaics up here, but very high so that they get a lot of south sun as well. And they make the whole three buildings, three houses into an energy plus house. Very small plus, but at least we're making more energy than we're using. And that includes two electric cars. Okay, here I'd like to show you a section through the house uh, from west to east, showing on the west side the system of preheated ventilation air. We, we, we call them in architectural circles, we call them earth registers. Now, we didn't do it on the east side because Already the concrete had been poured here, so we couldn't get under it with the, with the pipes. These are pipes, they go down below the surface, 2 meters 50 to 3 meters, and then they come up very slowly into the basement. Or they can be put into the is a greenhouse. Now the cold air falls. It's warmed here because it's always plus 10 degrees centigrade at 2 meters 50 or 3 meters. And then it rises just a little here and up into the greenhouse, pre-warming the greenhouse. Now <clears throat> take the example of it being minus 15 degrees outside, which often happens here in December, January, February, we have a difference between minus 15 and plus 10. That's 25 degrees difference for pre-warming this. And um, I allow the air then to go into the house and all the way up through the house to warm the house as well. This is where we're sitting now here, this section here, and you can see the air is warmed with, with the glass, the double glass, and the air is warmed with these earth registers. So the earth register brings in the air in, and the air warms and goes up. Hot air rises, and so it gets, and we keep the, the windows closed. Now we can also get in the warm air that's here. It's relatively warm air in the winter. It goes up here through that and that's closed now because it's not warm enough. But there's a hole in, in the wall up there to allow us into the first floor. You can see it better on this section here. You see? Here we are with the, the hole going up and you just take this thing out here which is insulated and you get the way air in. Now otherwise the flap can open right at the topmost point so there's no clogging of hot air here and no condensation and the air can move on out into the normal air, ambient air. And these things these flaps here open automatically on a system of temperature feelers. They switch on the mechanism, which is an electric 
to open them and to close them when it gets over 30 degrees. Right. Now we can go out and go back to this point where the air comes in and we walk out of the greenhouse and the west door and we come to a bush here and this bush covers the pipes which are taking the air down three meters here. This a combination of two plants which give off a very light scent which means that the air is not only fresh that comes in it's also slightly scented so that it doesn't bring in the insects with it. It's a very easy system to put in. It's a bit more complicated to understand but it works. It's been working now 35 years and I've sa saved an immense amount of heating by having these. And it's just a small extra investment which you get back within a couple of years. Right, so the pipes come in at different places but here's the easiest one to see. It comes in here into the south greenhouse and um, it's, a te it's a 10 centimeter pipe. Uh, polyethylene. Uh, take care, do not use PVC because you bring in poisons with it. And here is a gauze on top of it so that the insects don't get in and any other small animals. But it brings in the air through the geranium which also pulls down the bugs. Righto, and it's enough for this whole greenhouse. We have a second one over here which is mainly thought about for the west greenhouse. Um, it's on the floor because it was the best place to put it in. Even now you can feel the air coming in at this moment and we're in a sort of a neutral time of the year where outside and inside are roughly the same temperature. This means that we can have plants all the year round like figs here and, and um, lemons and kumquats. Uh, I can have aloe vera which is not only good for your skin but also for your stomach and um, I have then lots of teas and herbs. In July 1985, my late wife Margaret and I decided to buy these two houses in Steierberg, in the beginning of the project Lebensgarten Steierberg. We decided that we were going to plan from the beginning and we would take our time moving because I would still have some commitments in the winter semester of 85, 86 in Berlin. The minute we took over the house though in August 85, I couldn't stop. I started already cleaning it up and getting all the mildew out and things like that. Most of the windows were broken, some of the ceilings as well, and it was quite a job. But we still decided we were going to move in to get 
the feeling of the house, to really design around us. So we started then with, with this plan, which was immediately the permaculture idea of house and um, wraparound greenhouses and the reflecting pond to get the most out of this solar systems around us. This is the south here. During that and until the end of 1986, when we really were fully then moved in, we were here every second month, if not more. But our main idea after a couple of months was, we're not just going to renovate the house for our own use as house and office, but we are going to renovate it at, up to the moment to see how we can get at the aim of being a zero energy house, even though the main part of the building was built in 1938. Well built for that time, but in point of fact, pretty poorly insulated, if not at all. Single windows, beautiful oak windows, a couple of French doors to the garden, also beautiful oak. We renovated them in such a way that we were able to use them in between the house itself and the wraparound greenhouses. Okay, 1938 is a time where the architect who built this settlement really went to town on brick. He also took care that he put the ley lines always in the walls rather than through the rooms. Of course, that changed a bit over, the time, over time. But we were quite clear that this house had to be planned in such a way that could be flexible, that it could be as we wanted at first, for an office for seven people and a dwelling house for two with a space for a intern. So we had to go really ground everything. Everything had to be done. The walls had to be replastered in part. All the floors had to be redone. Okay, it was a challenge, but on the other hand, it was just fantastic because we meant we could do everything to organic standards and barbiology, as we call it. We could do everything so that we could save resources. We could save energy. Each building element could be thought out. And we had a lot of good advice from the Institute for Bauvillagy in um, Rosenheim. We also wanted to have most of the built-in furniture, etc., flexible enough that we could change the use of the rooms. For instance, that's happened three or four times in the last 36 years, where we've built in a little flat or we have changed it again to be a small office. And so we were thinking of the further renovation while we were planning for our own thing. But you can really make quite unusual living spaces.
Lebensgarten people didn't really get around to insulating. We got around to insulating by doing the greenhouses, but in the second house, which was the office, we were told we were going to have a heat loss there, so we did um, thermal insulation from in, inside and, and on the west side from outside. The whole thing cost us quite a bit. You could almost say 80% as if we had built a completely new house over the years. But we could use it immediately, first of all. The second thing is we could recycle all the built resources that were here. So this alone is, is um, a big contribution to pulling down the CO2. This turned out to be very much less work than we thought it would be, even though we have quite a lot of greenhouses and three different climates, you could say. The east is the warmest part of Germany. The west uh, greenhouse is North Italy. And here where I'm sitting is in point of fact, Greece, South Greece. So that's the reason why I have figs here and lots of plants in that direction. I'd like to show you how it works with the sun and the greenhouses because it's very important to get the right angles. During most of the year, the sun is coming in with the 60 degrees here in, into the greenhouse. And it's turning into heat in the greenhouse. And the heat it begins to move. And it moves um, up a bit here then. So through the um, heat of the, uh, through the glass, moves up and then we have the possibility of it turning around here, but we also have the possibility of it going into the house itself. The hot air rises and then the cool air begins to, to fall again here. And so we get the cool air moving down and then moving back towards the greenhouse and right. This is um, the normal situation. Then it, it cools off, begins to warm up because already through the heat of the sun, this whole section becomes a storage of heat. And then it moves up again uh, on the heat. Now in the winter time, um, in the deep winter time, we'll have the reflection of the pond here. The reflection of the sun is very low. It's 14 degrees and it, it reflects into the greenhouse and supports then the already brought in air of plus 10 degrees, as I showed with the, with the pipes. Um, this same angle comes in, of course, here directly, into in heating up this wall and making this wall into a storage. It's uh, quite the opposite way around in the, in the summertime, and I think I should take another color, but here in the summertime it comes in here very high and it reflects off. So it doesn't get any height. And what happens is in the summertime you have the summer angle coming along here and you have the solar systems here, the um, solar hot water and the flaps right down to here. 
And so we get the, the uh, shadow, this wall in shadow, you see, by this way coming in like this. So you're, you're, um, so you're actually cooling in the summer and you're warming in the winter. And that's a system that we've put through in the whole house. It's just more directly explained here with the reflection pond and the glass. I'd like to explain to you uh, the reason why we decided on two single glass glazing rather than double glazing. Double glazing like Thermopane and other similar uh, firms are making double glass with either um, vacuum in the middle or with a gas in between. Both have a difficulty in that after about seven to 10 years, the frames allow the gas out, out are the air into the vacuum. And so they become very much less efficient. And we decided to go from a somewhat less thermal insulation, but to work it in with the construction. So we start with a, uh, a three by six centimeters wood frame. This three by six centimeter wood frame is like a network supporting each other through the different angles. This is just normal deal wood. We put a U-shaped metal both on the outside and on the inside. This is specially bent for the position. This metal is a support. It's also a reinforcing for the wood that goes along. So it runs along like this. And it um, can span anything up to four meters 50, which is the point where you begin to have your heat loss when you're making a lean to greenhouse. Okay, we then put um, a little bit of silicone here and here, all sides, and we put one glass in from the outside, leaving an expansion joint here, the other glass inside, and which is this one here. Right. And through the ceiling cone here and here, we seal it off. And this um, wood goes all the way through, and there's another piece of wood then coming along here, which has holes in it to allow the air to move. So to make sure that the water doesn't come in, we have a further piece of wood here, which is usually something like larch, because you can have larch in the weather for anything up to 40 years. Ours is now 35 years. Inside, 35 years there. Inside we have another here, but this can be ordinary deal or uh, um, pine. So um, the the whole thing is is uh, supported though on this wood here. So we have this wood in here, and then we have 
this one here outside and we have this one here. So you actually see the wood more than the metal. The metal is just there as support. This means that the air can come through and now I'd like to show it to you as it was built and how it has lasted 35 years. Here we're now seeing it in the reality. What I was explaining on the drawing and you can see here the each piece of wood is covered with metal and reinforced and there are holes in the wood here and up there so that the air can move through between the two glass panes. Here we have a um, system where the air can get in with a filter because we had to take care. Um, there were a lot of flies getting in and then it was like a graveyard of flies. So we allow the air through. There are small tubes going to these holes and then it moves all the way up just naturally because the hot air rises as it warms and it goes through into the roof section which is exactly the same type of glazing, double glazing from outside and from inside one each time. Here it's very important that the pieces of wood in between the glass that they are made of special wood that can withstand the rain but they've held 35 years so they're going to hold on a bit still. So you see also the water can run down and off and it can be gathered here and it runs through into the reflecting pond. The reflecting pond is pretty long. The reflecting pond is also a watering system from my back garden. Because the prevailing wind comes here, comes in from the southwest. The evaporation of the water in summertime is carried with the wind all the way through to the back garden. So I have seldom to water the back garden. My neighbors water three or four times as much as I do for that reason. So it's a question of design. It's not only important to have the reflection for the greenhouse, it's also important for the watering, as I said. But we also have a barrier here because we have a lot of deciduous plants here. Losing their leaves in the, in the winter so that the sun can come through but making shadow in the summertime so that it doesn't get too hot. If we also look at this particular plant here, I've forgotten the name of it. As far as I know, American Bittersweet. It has a fruit on it which is very small and is not edible for humans. But when it's ripe, it falls into the pond, into the water, and the fish love it. Now the fish I have never put in. The fish come with the birds. When they come in to wash themselves, they drop the fish spawn into the water and then I just have them automatically. Sometimes I have too much, but that's seldom.
Maybe to sum up, we can say that this renovation of these houses here are not only for energy efficiency, as it might seem from uh, this film, but it's also an upgrade of building materials, and especially in the quality, and uh, especially also that they will match. Now, what do I mean by matching? Uh, mostly, windows don't match walls. They have different life cycles. And what we've tried to do here is to get all the materials beside each other with the same life cycle. We did a life cycle analysis, which was very unusual at that time. It's almost uh, necessary with every renovation nowadays. Um, and we've upgraded even over the 35 years as well. For instance, um, the doors and especially to the greenhouse. They were of less quality than the rest of the greenhouse. Then we have the whole system of the standardization of materials. Uh, that was very important in our design for the greenhouse. We took the standard greenhouse glasses, uh, you could say panes, that are ready cut and we designed both walls and roof out of it and kept to these um, axes of, of the mullions so that uh, we were able to connect up the walls and the roof with the air system going through. That was very important because often the roof is a different um, a different size, different shape uh, with different materials. Whereas here it was the same material going all the way through. But luckily uh, the system worked pretty well because we got the whole of the network of wood and metal supporting itself and being as a unity. We, ha we had to do quite a bit of replacement of the outside woods at first because we didn't take the large wood. Uh, we thought the normal deal would, would work when it was well maintained. Finally, we had to do, think it over once again. Are we really uh, going towards a zero energy house? Um, and um, at first, if you just look at the greenhouse itself, it's not necessarily the case. But if you look at the production of electricity and the replacement of outside electricity with your own, then it actually comes to a point where we were making more energy in the, on the whole than we were using in the two houses. These I, this I measured uh, once after about 11 years and then again after uh, 25 years. 25 years, it was really amazing to see the rough balance that we were able to make. And we were more than 100% uh, self-sufficient per annum. OK, this is not scientifically proven, but it's a good yardstick and it's a good way of looking at this because renovation is always a bit of a uh, risk whether you will get 
the thing really as tight as it would otherwise with a new zero energy house. So in point of fact, we have roughly made it, but if not more so, we actually have a surplus of energy that we put back into the grid.